If I, for whom simple name is simply Tommy Chancey Castle Sr., am the answer, for whom, according to the Black's Law Dictionary, is legally defined as a response to a question, a pleading, and a discovery request already made to Allah, for whom is God, through Minister Malcolm X's prayers, as well as the answer, for whom, according to the Black's Law Dictionary, is legally defined as to assume the liability of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s prayers made to God for whom is Allah in the civil and criminal courthouses in Seminole and Orange Counties in the state of Florida on August 12, in 2008 at 1040 in the morning, as well as in the federal courthouse in the Middle District of Florida on February 20th in 2018 at 920 in the morning. Would I, for whom name is Petty Officer Third Class, Tommy Chancey Council Senior of the United States Navy, already be a legally, historically, biblically, religiously, spiritually, financially, mentally, as well as federally made statement, for whom, according to the Black's Law Dictionary, is legally defined as a verbal assertion, for whom, according to the Black's Law Dictionary, is legally defined as a declaration for whom, according to the Black's Law Dictionary, is legally defined as a formal statement, proclamation, and announcement legally, historically, biblically, religiously, spiritually, financially, mentally, and federally made by my for whom name is President Tommy Chancey Castle Sr. of Four Castles Incorporated Family History, for which according to the Black's Law Dictionary is legally defined as information about the health of a patient for whom in this case is Moses' exodus and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s civil rights movement as well as Minister Malcolm X's lawsuit in the world court which is legally, historically, biblically, religiously, spiritually, financially, mentally, and federally for whom are mine, for whom name is King Tommy Chansey Castle Sr. of Four Castles Incorporated, legal, historical, biblical, religious, spiritual, financial, mental, and federal re relatives, for whom all have indicated whether the, the patient in this case is history, for which is defined as a chronological record of significant events such as those affecting a nation or institution, often including an explanation of their causes is in her in, 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 uh, hereditary. So saying the causes of history is hereditary, right? So for which is according to the Black's Law Dictionary is legally defined as of, relating to, or involving inherited, for which is defined as to receive from an ancestor as a right or title descendable by tendencies, for which is defined as a proneness, for which is defined as being likely to do a particular kind of action against me, for whom simple name is simply Tommy Chancey Castle Sr. in the civil and criminal courthouses in Seminole and Orange Counties in the state of Florida on August 12th in 2008 at 1040 in the morning as well as in the federal courthouse in the Middle District of Florida on February 20th in 2018 at 9.20 in the morning, is why only history, for which is defined as an account of a patient for whom in this case is the United States of America's mental health background, can only legally, historically, biblically, religiously, spiritually, financially, mentally, as well as federally testify, for which is defined as to give evidence as a witness to me, for whom name is Petty Officer Third Class Tommy Chancey Council Senior of the United States Navy, which is why I, for whom name is Petty Officer Third Class Tommy Chancey Council Senior of the United States Navy, am now legally, historically, biblically, religiously, spiritually, financially, mentally, and federally submitting Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech as well as uh, some excerpts from uh, some historical speeches that Minister Malcolm X gave. Um, and let me see, the one is I'm reading from, 
is the ballot or the bullet. And, uh, but this is just, you know, I looked it up and then I like, cause it's what is happening to me is what he said. And so it has, um, what I want, you know, to, um, to talk, to, to talk about. See, this is like what, um, courts do and, um, they go get a case and in that case, they they um, reference the crime. So what I'm doing is I'm going back and I'm getting the um, my four uh, ancestors, which is Dr. Martin Luther King and Minister Malcolm X who fought for me. I'm giving their reading of what was going on during their lifetime. So this is the ballot or the bullet that I'm entering into evidence and self-defense against the same ideology that I'm now presently facing. So it says, 10 days after Malcolm X's de declaration of independence, the Muslim Mosque Incorporated held the first of a series of four Sunday night public rallies in Harlem, at which Malcolm began the job of formulating the ideology and philosophy of a new movement. In this opinion, of many who heard these talks, they were the best he had ever done. Unfortunately, tape recordings of these meetings were not available in the uh, preparation of this book simultaneously. However, M um, Malcolm began to accept speaking engagements outside of New York at Chester, Pennsylvania, Boston, Cleveland, Detroit, elect, and tapes of some of the these were available. In Cleveland, uh, talk given at Cory Methodist Church on April 3rd, 1964, Malcolm presented many of the themes he had been developing in Harlem, in Harlem rallies. The meeting uh, sponsored by the Cleveland chapter of, of the Congress of Racial Equality took the form of a similar you know, sim, uh, wait, hold on, sim, uh, possum, something like this, hold on, sim or something, hold on, I gotta look it up, so, that's why we got dictionary, we can get smart together, so hold on, let me get it together, see, that's why I said, you come to mind, I, I'm on, uh oh, now I done lost it, <laughs> well, you know, I'm dealing with they stuff now, so, I don't know what, I'm trying to, Oh shit, I done lost it. See that what I'm telling y'all about. The man it just popped like this and now it's gone. But I understand, but see that what I'm telling y'all now. You don't understand what I'm talking about. But you know what? It's gone, man. I don't see it. See this thing. Oh, this thing done clicked to declaration, man. This <laughs> see that they done flipped it to a whole nother page. Oh man. Okay, look, this is what they flipped it to. See, I'm going to just let you, they say, the problem facing our people here in America is bigger than all other personal or organizational differences. See, I guess that's what they saying. Like, they didn't want me to tell y'all that. <laughs> so they flipped it to this. But now, I know it looked like I'm tripping. See, but I'm saying it's 15 years now. <laughs> See, so, see, this is why I didn't want to say nothing at the beginning of the conspiracy. Because in the beginning of the conspiracy, my family and friends thought that I was wrong. So, see, I had to weather the storm of their understanding to show them that I was the perfect storm that they couldn't understand. So, now these people, since they done been able to put me in a mental hospital, see, <laughs> So now that I'm coming out here trying to educate y'all, they like flipping it, see? And then it looked like I'm tripping. <laughs> see what I'm saying? But anyway, if this is what they want me, because this is the Declaration of Independence, I'm using the Declaration of Independence when Minister Malcolm met, because I read this and I wasn't going to use this. I was going to use the bullet or the ballot. <laughs> see, but they say, no, nah, don't do that. <laughs> see, that's what I'm saying. So they say, tell y'all this, right? So it's saying the problem facing our people here in America. Oh, no, what I was saying is 
this is when Minister Malcolm X uh, was thrown out of the, the black Muslims. So he gave a declaration of independence, just like when I was thrown out of America. See, I have been thrown out of America, but it don't look like it because you don't see my incarceration. See what I'm saying? Because they couldn't physically incarcerate me, but they jailed me. And see, that's what I'm saying. That is when you showed my incarceration. But because of my military training and the military taught me how to act when I'm captured, see, now I'm leaning on what I was taught. See what I'm saying? So now, now the same people who taught me how to act if I'm caught, in a in a foreign land is now acting like a foreign Arab adversary, right? So now I'm going and getting my ancestors and say, hey man, America, see, they said that you have done this to us. So now by me being tribal by nature, plus you gave me an oath to defend the constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic, why now is not your treatment of my people, which my ancestors is saying in books? See, because we could read, some of us, <laughs> see? So Dr. Martin Luther King, Minister Malcolm X was literary. They could read, they could write. So they wrote for prosperity what they experienced. Now I'm in court experiencing the same thing they experienced out of court. See, they couldn't go in the court. They didn't have rights. They didn't have protection under the law. See, that was in, that was the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which I used in self-defense when I was 25. So see, when you, when you say, man, you should take care of yourself, I'm saying I did when I was 25. But when they did it again, I was 39. So why wouldn't I now take my rightful place if I became mature enough to understand that the moment of clarity had then came clear to me? <laughs> See what I'm saying? Now, if your moment of clarity is not clear to you, then that's your religion or your beliefs. See, I'm saying because you got your belief from whatever you subscribe to. What if you're a hustler on the street, you don't believe in the law because the law is your adversary, right? See, the law not going to help you because of what you do. So why would you be a student of the law when it's not going to help you because of what you do? See, but now what I'm saying is these people who are supposed to be administrators of the law have used the law like a weapon. So now people are afraid of the law instead of embracing the law that they're afraid of. See, the problem is, it's not the law you're afraid of, it's the judge. But if you know the law, then you will know when the judge is no longer a judge according to the law. See, once the judge violate the law, the law is now on the judge. But if you don't know how to make the law attack the judge, then the judge is going to use the law to attack you. See, it's a war. See, it's just civil in nature, but it's violent nevertheless. <laughs> it's a violent war. It's just done with pens. And at the end... The judge going to prison and the new judge is going to be known. So that's why I was telling my family, hey, man, I know what you thinking, but what you thinking is wrong. See, but they all oh, you just don't want to admit you wrong. You, I'm saying, OK, brother. But for now, why you don't want to admit you wrong? <laughs> See what I'm saying? You wanted me to admit that I was wrong, but I wasn't wrong. But now I done went through court and now you don't want to admit you wrong. But it doesn't matter if you do not see you wrong because now it's out in the world and there ain't nothing you can do for me now. See, because it done got too big. <laughs> see, and that's why I was telling you I don't want to be famous. This too big, man. <laughs> see, I don't I want this, man. This is a problem.
This ain't, I can't get back to my wife. I, I can't get to my kids. Now I need security. I need all it for what? Because I've told the truth. See, the only person needs security is the liar. Because they know that they in jeopardy. But why would I need security? They st they starving me. So, so listen. The problem facing our people. Now, this is Dr. I mean, this is Minister Malcolm X, right? And this is called a, a Declaration of Independence. In, in this book, um, okay, 21, let me show you the book. But I don't know, it ain't showing. Okay, it say Malcolm X Speaks. Um, edi um, edition by George Brittman, B-R-E-I-T-M-A-N. It's uh, over and over again in simple, imaginary, savagery, uh, savagely, uncompromising he drove home the real truth i.f stone so it's uh it's see that that's the name of the book uh, that that i'm reading from okay so it's uh 21 it's uh, okay and it says malcolm x speaks selected speeches and statements edited with pre uh prefactor notes by george bratman so, okay, so that's that's what I'm dealing with. Uh, and it's, uh, I'm reading out of uh, Roman numerals 2, uh, a Declaration of Independence, March 2nd, 1964, New York City. That's what he gave this on March 2nd, I mean, excuse me, March 12th in 1964 in New York City. This is, so I'm reading from that speech he gave on that day. See, that's why writing is important because writing leaves historical trails so you will know where you at in history. See, and, and that's why I'm kind of hurt with my people because, you know, we couldn't write and we couldn't read. So why are you denying what I have written? See, like, what what is your issue with me? See, you, how are you helping me by stopping my children's children's children from truly knowing me? See, the only way you actually would know me is when you see me in all of my glory. See, but now I see you. <laughs> see, and I'm saying, well, why are you stopping me from glorifying me, but you not stopping the post office from slandering me? You start helping them slander me. See, and you say you my friend, I'm saying, or my family member. I'm saying, well, why are you not helping me glorify me, but you helping my enemy slander me? Think about that. But anyway, this is uh, page 21. The problem facing our people here in America is bigger than all other personal or organizational differences. There. As le therefore, as leaders, we must stop worrying about the threat that we seem to think we pose to each other's, <laughs> see, personal uh, pet, uh, prestige and concentrate our un unit. Uh, damn, see this shit? I'm, I'm crying and everything. Let me see. Um, hold on. We, we must stop worrying about the threat that we seem to think we pose to each other's personal uh, prestige and concentrate our united effort to towards solving the unending hurt that is being done daily to our people here in America. <laughs> Boy, he, <laughs> daily, it's been done to me. I am going to organize and head a new mosque in New York City known as the Mo Muslim Mosque Inc Incorporated. This gives us a religious base and the sp spiritual force necessary to rid our people of the vices that destroy the moral fabric of our country. Our political philosophy will be black nationalism. Our economic and social philosophy will be black nationalism. Our cultural emphasis will be black nationalism. Many of our people aren't religiously inclined. See, that's me. <laughs> so... The uh, Mars Incorporated will be organized in such a manner to provide for the active participation of all Negroes in our political, economic, and social programs, despite their religious or non-religious religious beliefs. See, so I'm see now. This is what I'm talking about. See, 
see, why should I only help those who think like I think when I think like me and I don't think like nobody else? See, so if I am fighting an enemy, then wouldn't my enemy be your enemy? If you are truthful in your appearance, see now, if you are criminal, then you would be against me because I am justice. See, so it's not about the color, it's about your actions. See what I'm saying? See, that's what I've learned by my journey to myself. You see what I'm saying? That I've seen that the people that I thought wanted me to be something was the people that wanted me to be just enough that I didn't upset them. See, that's what he's saying, our prestige. So see, when I ended up growing a higher than them, then they started trying to slander me. And I'm saying, man, well, why can't we rise together? But it wasn't formed like that. See, religion is you the man, you the one man, and everybody else under you is subject. See, it's a, it's a, it's a reign. It's just religious in nature. See, Caesar was a conqueror. The church is a deceiver. <laughs> see, see, they they conquer you through deception because they not who they say they are. They telling you about somebody else. See what I'm saying? So they really like narrators. Like me, I'm narrating what Do uh, Minister Malcolm X said. But I wrote earlier in this what I said. <laughs> see what I'm saying? So I'm just, in the legal sense, I'm, I'm showing that the that the mental sickness that was then is still now. Like, okay, when did it ever subside? See what I'm saying? America has never given every citizen the right to be free. It, 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 what it does is it gives you a right to work for them. And then they'll take that right away and then tell you they too big to fail. That's that what they did to me. And I'm saying, well, if you too big to fail, then none of us can succeed. See, but you go to the poor man, he can't understand what you're saying. I'm saying, man, the government just say they too big to, to fail. I work for the United States Postal Service. So now, do you not understand why my co-workers who they sent zero checks like they sent me went back in there and shot it up? Oh, now they say, oh, Tommy, you crazy. I'm saying, bro, don't you see these people done went to war with me? They sent me zero checks for two years, eight months after they lied on me and said that I told they, um supervisor to step outside. But I'm telling the post office, I'm saying, hey, that man worked for us just like I worked for us. I'm saying we I work for the United States Postal Service. This is not supposed to be you siding with nobody, man. You're supposed to be looking at the truth. <laughs> You're not supposed to be looking at black or white or whatever. You're the United States Postal Service. So that's why I asked to be emancipated. I work for the government and I have been denied of my constitutional rights. <laughs> so I work for a person that said I was their property. <laughs> I wasn't a human being. They could, they could make me and destroy me. And I'm saying, okay, now you don't know me. But the first time I looked at it as you made a mistake. See, now the second time I see the post office for what it is. See, now I'm saving my coworkers from branch 1091's incompetency. See, because I'm saying, how do we have a union and no representation, and that's not represent, uh, that's not taxation without representation. We pay union dues. That's a tax. <laughs> See, and I did not ever get no um, defense from the union. They just kept taking my money, but I had to fight my case. I had to get my job back, and then I had to fight to keep my job. <laughs> that's why I'm telling people. I'm saying, look, I have six EEOs in. One was to get back in the post office and five while I was in the post office. Now, how you telling me I'm not under attack, man? But now you want to say I'm racist. But let me show you what my, what, what my forefather's saying. 
Okay, so he's saying, okay, that, do 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 The political philosophy of black national means we must control the politics and the politicians of our community. See, so that was me calling the politicians when I had a problem with the United States Postal Service. I called Senator Bill Nelson, who came into black communities asking for votes because he's a Democratic senator. Now, I didn't call the Republicans because the Republicans don't come into the black community. You rarely saw a, a Republican try to even get black votes. See, they all them uppity black people. See, see what it be? The one that got so much money that they feel like the government taking too much taxes from me. See, but you saying, homeboy and sister, y'all got blessings that the rest of us don't have. And those taxes is what helps us. You see what I'm saying? See, that's why I didn't mind paying taxes because my grandmama was on assistance and my mama was on assistance. So I understood that my tax dollars, even if they wasn't, they were supposed to. See, take care of the least of these. So now, when I see that they are not doing for the least of these, I sue them for the least of these. See, I did not become a Republican. I became an independent. See what I'm saying? See, when I saw that the Democrats wasn't doing what they supposed to be doing and the Republicans never was doing what they were supposed to be doing, I became an independent. So I can do what I need to do for me. See, I'm not a politician. I'm a child from the projects. <laughs> see, that? That see, uh, most of these politicians never seen the projects. They ain't never seen it. See what I'm saying? That's why they can get back in financial backing. See, my people can barely afford to feed themselves. So I don't ask them for no financial nothing, no financial assistance or nothing. See, I did it all myself. I paid for the for the cases, uh, my knowledge, my 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 crime, I mean uh, my the crime that was committed against me, all of that is all happened to me and then I used that to then take care of the least of these. See, y'all not doing that. See, my work speak for itself. That's why you cannot let these people know how I work. <laughs> See, you got to slander me because you lie to them. See, this is what he's saying. This, okay. They mu must no longer take orders from outside forces. See? See, that's being lobbied. See, they come, these black politicians and preachers and shit they come in our communities they get our vote tell me what they do after they get our vote you never see them again until they need you to vote for their friend <laughs> see or vote for them now oh they coming but when did they ever come with a job now i went to them with a corporation that was protected by the constitution and they played politics so why would you give them your vote when they play politics with a black corporation that was going to give you a job. So now, why would you give them a job and they denied you of a job? But hey, that you know, because I guess you just want a, a place to go worship. You don't want no place to take care of your family. So you want me to build a church so you can help me take care of my family? Well, I'm saying, well, that's what you be would be doing if you helped me in Chancey Incorporated. You'll be helping me help my family, but I'll be paying you to help your family. <laughs> See what I'm saying? See, we'll be helping each other. But if I built the church, then you come in to listen to me and pay me for listening to me. So what good, what kind of savior would I be to you if I didn't do the services that you needed rendered? See, if I didn't provide the services, how then would you even know that I'm worthy to be listened to, let alone worshiped. See what I'm saying? Like if I didn't do the works of a deity, then how could I get the reward of a deity? See what I'm saying? So, but anyway, let me get back to what, cause see this is them and, and uh, so they say, okay, they must no longer take orders from outside forces. We, we will organize and sweep out the office of all Negro politicians who are puppets for the outside forces. Our accent will be upon youth. We need new ideas, new methods, new approaches. 
we will call upon young students of political science. See, that's what I was trying to do. See, I was saying, man, this ain't for me. This is for y'all. Y'all the future. So you better take control of your future while you can. Because if you let this go off the cliff, how can you pull your future from over the cliff? And there's no strings on it. See, they have cut the binds that binds us. See what I'm saying? So if we are now suspended with no legal protections, then how can you pull yourself back from the brink if you do not con um, attach the law to what was lost? <laughs> See, so what I'm doing is I'm pulling you back with the Florida Constitution, the United States Constitution, the Florida Bill of Rights, the United States Bill of Rights, the United States Declaration of Independence, statutory law, and the Civil Rights Act of 1964. See, so I have put uh, protections around the future that I'm asking you young children to come help me build for you and your creations. Because don't you see that poor people was not um, in the plan of prosperity? The, the plan of prosperity was off of the poor, not for the poor. See, I am giving you a plan for poor people's prosperity because I came from the poor. I was from Gri uh, South Street Projects in Daytona Beach, Florida, and I'm from Griffin Park in Orlando, Florida, two projects. See what I'm saying? So I went from being in a project to having a financial project for people in the projects so they can get out of the projects mentally and then they can stay out financially. See, once you out mentally, then A, if you do not destroy the mentality of the poor, then you will be poor because you will be the only one that know. See, that's why the Bible says spread the gospel. See, the gospel is not what was written. The gospel is what is being wrote. See, if you are spreading it, then you should be revealing what is stopping it from being spread it truthfully if you spreading the truth. But anyway, so see, uh, okay, we will call up. Okay, no, that's okay. Political science throughout the nation to help us. We will encourage these young students to launch their own independent study. Hey, Amen. I've been telling y'all, I don't want y'all to be me because I done had to be so many things that I really myself don't know who I am no more. I have to learn how to be just to try to make it through the day. I had to learn something to make me want to live to tomorrow. See, that's what I'm telling y'all kids, right? See, you got to find a reason to get up in ignorance, especially when the ignorance is not yours. And see, if I wouldn't have cemented my knowledge, then I would be hopeless now because I'm around a bunch of slaves who think they smart, but they was taught how to be smart. See, I learned how to be smart. <laughs> see, that's different. See, the people when I was in school, they never taught me because I was always teaching them. But see, people was like, oh, Tom, he think he did. Oh, he, 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 he. Now I'm saying, yeah. I got the same degree you got. I got a high school diploma like you do, but I got honorary degrees. <laughs> see, see, when you get an honorary degree, it's a degree for who you are. See, just like Miss um, Maya Angelou. <laughs> see, she was so prolific at writing that she taught it. She taught her brand of poetry. So how was she an honorary professor Everybody else was honored to be in her class. A woman didn't even finish school. She didn't even talk because she had got raped and she stopped talking. But look, she was not a, a, a ignorant. She stopped talking because the person who raped her, her uncle's killed.
So she knew then that, now I read this in her book, The Killer Mockingbird. See, that's how I know it. I read the book. See what I'm saying? I didn't watch the movie. I read the book. See, but anyway, I, I'm not going to get into that. But anyway, um, so, okay, independent studies and then give us their analysis. See, that's what I'm, see that, man. This is what I'm saying about these people who walk with these people, man. Somebody still living was at this um, speech. They talked to kids about it. Oh, yeah, I bet I was I with Minister Malcolm X, man. Oh, I seen him in New York, man, on, on, on March 12th, man, 1964 or 63 or whatever it is. You see what I'm saying? Just like when people, but they tell me to shut up. So it's like they like the black Muslim and they're they telling me to shut up speaking black truth to black people. Because they say the truth is mine. And I'm saying, well, what other truth can I speak truthfully? Like, what other truth can I speak more truer than my truth? But you want me to shut up, but you want me to go tell you about Jesus. How do I know Jesus' truth? I know what the people said. They said he said. But I'm telling you straight from me what's happening to you and what I did about it. But you say, man, be quiet, man. You all, you act like you all that. Want to fight, too. And I'm saying, homeboy, I'm the United States Navy. <laughs> so if you want to fight, let's go to court. Because right now, I'm not a person. <laughs> I'm a force. See, I'm defending the United States Constitution. So when you want to fight me... You want to fight the Navy, the Marines, the Army, the Air Force, and the Coast Guard. See, that's who you you want to fight? Come on. <laughs> that's what, but let me call my forces because you a force of evil. Let me call the forces of good. <laughs> See, that's all I'm saying. And then you want to fight? <laughs> Man, I sit back and watch. All day. You know how many of us it is? I'm talking about active duty. But what about those who are uh, we, we inactive and you going to make us active? <laughs> See, man, you know what trouble you in, bro? I ain't in no trouble. None. I'm the United States Constitution, man. I'm the most safe document in America. I got two Marines watching me 24 hours a day. And when they call, it's a whole platoon coming. Man, you go, boy, you mess around. You don't know what you talking. See, y'all better go back to school and understand what you, what's really happening here, man. This, uh, this is a, <laughs> a new beginning. <laughs> this is, oh, man, come on, the old way is done. But anyway, if it ain't today, it's going to be one day. And give us their analysis and their suggestions. See, not these people. They don't even want you to even speak, man. They don't even want... And, and you say they the ones got all the problems. You you supposed to be of age now. You shouldn't have no more problems, man. You should have addressed all the problems you had. I did. That's why I can come to them with my way. Not, not the way. Just my way. I'm saying there is no way... It's just a way. Now, because your destination may not be my destination, but the way to get to your destination, you could use my way. That's all I'm saying. But how would you know my way if I didn't offer it to you? So then I would have been wrong to not offer you what I could. See, if I had the ability to then take over way Dr. Martin Luther King and Minister Malcolm X took a left off. And I then just allowed what I know they did for me. And then I made a deal with the person who killed them, who tried to assassinate me. Then what kind of blessing would I be to the descendants of Minister Malcolm X? and to the descendants of Dr. Martin Luther King. See what I'm saying? Or to the disciples of Minister Malcolm X, as well as the disciples of Dr. Martin Luther King. See, those great men had followers, just like Jesus had followers. So 
is not a follower, a disciple. Okay, now I got, because I'm trying to go, let me get on out of here now. Okay. Uh, okay, we are completely disenchanted with the old, <laughs> man, God, the old adult established politicians. Woo! We want to see some new faces, more militant faces. Concerning the 1964 elections, we will keep our plans on this a secret until a later date. But we don't intend for our people to be the victims of a political sellout again. <laughs> but man, in 1964, maybe that's why they killed. The Muslim Mosque Incorporated women remain wide open for idea and financial aid from all quarters. See, whites can help us, but they can't join us. Now, I don't agree with that part of it because... Now, I used to, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I used to, but the reason why I do not subscribe to that now is because more black people hurt me than white, and white people came to help me, and that's hard for me to say because I was a black militant, <laughs> like, and so, but when you see black people turn on you, and you know them, why would you be ignorant? when you see that the white man came to help me and the black man put me in a mental hospital. So the black man thought that my intelligence made me insane. The white man came because he saw my intelligence, but he was stuck because I, I rejected him, just like the Bible say. I rejected him, but the, but the people I allowed close to me starve me starving me for 15 years man now i'm reading the bible and now i'm leery of black people because they sick so they'll kill me like they kill minister malcolm a that's why i can't i can't trust them it's, it's no way i'll be around a bunch of black people man i couldn't I, man after you done sat here and, and hurt me like this? No, sir. And now I'm reading what you did to the, these great men before me? The man saying, man, y'all talking about y'all prestige. What prestige a slave got? See, you you ain't worrying about doing the work. You, you worrying about being honored for being you. See, you ain't trying to move us forward. You trying to move us towards you. See, I'm telling these kids, no, I want you to do what Dr. Ma I mean, Minister Malcolm X said. Don't worry about me. See, I'm nothing compared to you. See, I'm, I'm starving. So how could you care for me and you starving me, man? You don't care nothing for me. I care for you. But now I, see, I wish. But see, after you love something, how can you hate it? See, now... I love that I loved because my grandchildren's grandchildren's grandchildren would see the love I have for them. But now that I see that this generation, there is no truth in it, I see that there is no love in it. So now I understand why the devil is able to starve me. I understand because I'm starving the devil. See, when you feed love, you starve hate. <laughs> see, and I'm learning that. See, I'm feeding love out, out of my mind. It's coming out of my mouth and it's going into your ears. And that's feeding you. See, and, the, and so that's starving the hate. See what I'm saying? Now, nah. so what the hateful is doing is it's starving my body so my mouth can stop feeding you. <laughs> that's why y'all is ignorant, man. See, you will sit there and listen to a man tell you about another man as if you're going to grow wiser. But now when you listen to a man tell you about his wisdom, you starve his body. So what kind of person are you? What kind of person? See, I know you're a good Muslim because he's showing me about Muslims. I know you're a good Christian, but you ain't shit as a person.
<laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. You a good spiritual person because you can starve a human being and you can watch children starve and you can play politics. See, that's what he's saying. See, from 1964 to 2023, you black politicians and preachers is playing. Y'all ain't serious about winning the game of life. You trying to make us comfortable in losing. See? There can be no black-white unity until there is first some black unity. There can be no worker solidarity until there is first some racial solidarity. We cannot think of uniting with others until after we have first united amongst ourselves. And I'm going to leave that down, then I'm going to go to Dr. Martin Luther King. Now, this is Dr. Martin Luther King, I Have a Dream speech. This is copyrighted in 1963 by Martin Luther King Jr. Speech by the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. at the March on Washington. I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Five score years ago, a great American in whom symbolic, symbolic shadow we stand, today signed the Emancipation Proclamation. See, now the reason why, see, so I use the Emancipation Proclamation to free my people. So that's why this is, I'm entering it in as evidence, just like I entered in Dr. Uh, Minister Malcolm X's uh, uh, Declaration of Independence. Now I'm doing the march on Washington. See, okay, this momentous, momentous um, decree is a great beacon, light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who have been se seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of their captivity, but a hundred years Later, the Negro still is not free. 100 years later, the life of the Negro is still badly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. 100 years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty. <laughs> Boy, I see. see, they starving me. Black people, man, they know I'm out here hungry. See, but but he was talking about white people. I'm talking about black. I'm, I ain't even talking about black people. I'm talking about my family. I'm not, see, I ain't even going out of my How can you be where your family member at? He calling you every day telling you he hungry and you don't feed him. But they used to come to my house and eat. Every time. And they used to come when they know we was eating, you <laughs> see? And we fed them every time. So that means I was on a fixed income still feeding. These cats making all kind of money won't feed one man and then won't even allow me to feed myself. They will not help me go to court and get $800 million. They say I'm crazy while they watch me starve. I got books to sell, everything. They rather do what they doing than help me help children. Like Minister Malcolm X said. See, they worried about their prestige, but they slandered me, defamed me. For what? To say the post office? To say the cricket judges? Did they even know the judges? My friends? Did my friends know the judges? Did my friends know the people who lied on me at the post office? So why would they aid and abed them in lying on me? Because of their prestige? See, so, uh, so I'm on an island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. Mm. 100 years later, the Negro is still languished in the corners of American society and finds himself in exile in his own land. Black people is helping these people. You telling me 
That minister, uh, 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 Reverend Jesse Jackson don't remember that? Oh, but now he might be too old. Huh? <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. See, but it's sad, man. It's no way I should be like this, man, when this man had already said this. So we've come here today to dramatize a shameful condition. But when I went to Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church, to Pastor Willie C. Barnes to let him know about the shameful condition I was living in. The man throw me out of church. So how is that a man of God? He's not even a man in the same image as Dr. Martin Luther King. I went to that man and told him. So if he was Dr. Martin Luther King, we would be free now. But because he is descendant of the high priest Caiaphas, he was worrying about his place and his nation. He wasn't worrying about the least of these in Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church in Edenville, Florida. He was worrying about himself. Now, is that not blasphemy? What is it? I'm sitting here caring about the people because I took an oath. Excuse me. My country gave me an oath. I, I ain't take it. They gave it to me and I accepted it. And then when I saw it being violated, I went into the service of the least of these. And I went to him, a man of God, and the man turned his back on me. And now I'm out here starving. But is this that nigga eating? Why I ain't eating like him? He eating? I ain't supposed to eat? Because I don't want to lie to you. And Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> all that. I, ain't, I didn't curse. <laughs> In, in a sense, we've come to our nation's capital to cash a check. Now, this is what I was saying about the post office sending me zero checks for two years, eight months. Now, see, this is what now this is relevant. In a sense, we come to our nation's capital to cash a check. Now, that's one of the checks is for eight hundred million dollars. And I'm already in court, done done all the work to prove it, and black motherfucker. Oh, wait. <laughs> black people won't help me. See, they won't come to the, to the civil and criminal courthouses in Seminole and Orange counties in the state of Florida. Well, see, now you, ain't, you can't go into there because they done took me out of that one. Then they, they took me out of the federal court. But see, now I'm in the Osceola County Courthouse in Kissimmee, Florida. See, now if you come there like they went to Washington, D.C., that mon Monday will be paid. If y'all come there today, they got to give me my money. Monday we go to work. See, see, I'm in the future. I'm not present because I am presently being defamed, lied on, slandered. The, all the, anything, man, they just dragging my name through the mud daily. And yet they study politicking, study preaching. So what they preaching and what they politicking on? Lies. See, the zero check. Look, when the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution, which I have cited, and the Declaration of Independence, which I have also cited, they were signing a promissory note to which every American was, was to uh, fall heir inside of the civil and criminal courthouses in Seminole and Orange counties in the state of Florida ever since August 12th in 2008 at 1040 in the morning, as well as inside of the federal courthouse in the Middle District of Florida on February 20th in 2018 at 920 in the morning. This note was a promise that all men, yes, black men as well as white men, would be guaranteed the unedible rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is obvious today that America has defaulted on this promissory note insofar as her citizens of color are concerned in the civil and criminal courthouses in Seminole and Orange Counties in the state of Florida ever since August 12th in 2008 at 1040 in the morning, as well as in the federal courthouse in the Middle District of Florida ever since February 20th in 2018 at 920 in the morning. 
okay, in, instead of honoring this sacred obligation in the civil and criminal courthouses in Seminole and Orange Counties in the state of Florida on August 12th in 2008 at 1040 in the morning, as well as in the federal courthouse in the middle district of Florida ever since February 20th in 2018 at 920 in the morning. Okay, hold on. Okay, now this is what he's saying. Honoring this sacred obligation, and then I told you well. America has given Negro people a bad check, a check which has come back marked insufficient funds. See, they sent me zero checks. They sent me a check with insufficient funds for two years, eight months. So, is that not Dr. Martin Luther King testifying to the ideology of American politicians? I work for the United States Postal Service. They sent me zero checks, insufficient funds for two years, eight months. But now, see me knowing this, let me show you what I know, right? is I know that Amendment 14, Section 4 says that each one of those checks now cannot be questioned. <laughs> See, look, Amendment 14, Section 4, the validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law, that's the Florida Constitution, the United States Constitution, the Florida Bill of Rights, the United States Bill of Rights, the United States Declaration of Independence, statutory law and the Civil Rights Act of 1964 inside of the civil and criminal courthouses in Seminole and Orange Counties in the state of Florida on August 12th in 2008 at 1040 in the morning, as well as in the federal courthouse in the middle district of Florida on February 20th in 2018 at 920 in the morning, including debts incurred for payments of pensions and bounties for services in suppressing insurrection or rebellion in the civil and criminal courthouses in Seminole and Orange Counties in the state of Florida on August 12th in 2008 at 1040 in the morning shall not be questioned in the federal courthouse in the middle district of Florida on February 20th in 2018 at 920 in the morning. But neither the United States nor any state shall assume or pay any debt or obligation incurred in aid of surrection or rebellion against the United States of America or any claim for the loss or emancipation of any slave in the civil and criminal courthouses in Seminole and Orange Counties in the state of Florida or in the federal courthouse in the middle district of Florida. Uh, uh, but all such debts, obligations, and claims shall be held illegal and void in the civil and criminal courthouses in Seminole and Orange Counties in the state of Florida ever since August 12th in 2008 at 1040 in the morning. See, so I've done what my country, tis of the sweet land of liberty, told me to do when I was 18 years old and I did it. I fulfilled that obligation when I was 39 and the country that Dr. Martin Luther King said attacked him, attacked me. See? So now, if, if the same entity that a reverend was talking about and a minister has committed the same atrocities against a veteran for whom name is Petty Officer Third Class Tommy Chancy Castle Sr. of the United States Navy. How can I be prejudiced? How? when I am defending the documentation that the United States of America told me to protect and defend against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I was in Desert Storm, so I fulfilled that oath in a foreign war 
and I defended that oath in a domestic dispute. See, so now, when have I been derelict on my duty, but America is holding my checks? They've been holding them for 15 years. So that's not starvation. That's not genocide because you're doing it to one person. But when you kill my son, you genocide my bloodline. There'll be no more castles. Not from me. You kill my son. That's genocide. And I'm in court defending my bloodline. So why then was there not a hedge of protection around him? Because you Christians, you black my... So black people wouldn't protect my son because I'm not a Muslim so or I'm not a Christian. So it's okay then to run him over. But I'm a veteran. I put protections around him. I put protections around my daughter. I put protections around my wife. That's the Constitution. So you ran over the Constitution? Then you ran over America, and you know what we do when you fuck with America, don't you? When we go to war, all out, we nonstop. <laughs> See, but now when you kill a black kid, it's it's not the same, huh? Even though his father was a man of his word, so America is not a country of its word. Then how can it be a superpower? You are dominating people. You're not liberating nobody. You a liar to your own people. You an abomination to God. And you doing it in the name of a country. So why don't this America cleanse itself of this bullshit? Hmm? Let's be real for once in our generation. Because this the only generation we can actually be real in. See, now we're going to be fake in the next generation. See what I'm saying? See, if you don't do what's right in this generation, you will be wrong in every generation after this generation. See, so now you won't allow my truth to cleanse this generation from its elected officials and its religious leaders' lies. So now you're going to allow these lies to go forth religiously and you're not a blasphemer. Who are you then? Aren't you the one that's returning the checks now, insufficient funds? But yet, their mamas, their fathers, their grandmothers, their grandfathers are giving you real currency for a lie in return. That's why their children are suffering, dying, because you taking the money and investing it in materialistic things, but you're not building a place for habitation. See, you're not building like I'm doing. See, I'm trying to build houses. See, I'm trying to build um, hearts and minds. See what I'm saying? See, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to build the temple of God into something that God can be proud of. But look at how you turn the bodies of Christ into devil's temples. See, but Jesus said you have turned his father's house into a den of thieves. So wouldn't you then turn each temple into a thief? or a murderer because of your false doctrine. But see, once these kids realize that they are in the thrones of evil, then they'll remove themselves from evil's throne. <laughs> but you better stop because everybody can see you now, buddy. Okay, now, honoring this sacred obligation, America has given the Negro people a bad check, a check which has come back marked insufficient funds, but we refuse to believe that the bank of justice is bankrupt in the civil and criminal courthouses and Seminole and Orange counties in the state of Florida on August 12th in 2008 at 1040 in the morning. See, that's when they had bankrupt America. See, but the black people started helping America. And I'm saying, well, am I not defending America? So who did you help if you didn't help the person who was destroying America? 
but you wouldn't help the person who was whole in America, giving her what she deserved, protections, like she was my wife, she, like she was my children. See, I, I defended her honor with the documentations that honor her. See what I'm saying? See, I honored my wife with the vow that I gave her. See, I love her in sickness and health, for rich or for poor, and to death do us part. See, I never stopped loving her, and I never stopped loving my, my country, never. But my country has failed to love my color. It does wickedness to my color. And now I found out that my color aids and abets them in doing it. So now how do I cleanse my color without revealing the toxicity in it? See, those who won't let us go forth. See, I have to reveal them because they trying to, they not even trying to reveal me. They trying to obscure me. See, they trying to lie on me and they want me to be quiet while they lie openly. And I'm saying, well, why don't you stop lying? See, you the one need to shut up. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Me, I need to speak so these child, these children can grow from the from the from the fertilization of my words. See, I am fertile. See, that's why they can multiply. See, you, you are a lie. That's why they dying. But once they mamas understand, then they'll be understood. But until they see, they'll never know. We refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity of this nation. <laughs> see, but it is, see, because that's why I saw who would empty the vault of opportunity when I worked for the United States Postal Service and the United States government did not defend me and my opportunity to give opportunity to those who lack opportunity. So what I did is I sued them in accordance with the Civil Rights Act of 1964. And then I took over the obligations of the Civil Rights Movement. That's why I started a corporation, for-profit corporation, so we can then profit off of our movement. See, not profit off of our uh, deaths like these civil rights organizations. See, the only time they come, we have subtracted one of our greatness. That's the only time they come. Somebody dead. See, me, I am calling greatness to great opportunity. See, but first I had to cement my greatness and then hate came See, hate came from all over and it looked just like me. See, that's what I'm saying. Man, wasn't no white hate. <laughs> Man, I, it was familiar hate. Familiar. That's why I'm a family member spit in my face. I was, we were little kids together, man. See, this ain't, this is, this is biological genocide. That's what this is. See, my own family is genocide my family because they doing it mentally. So they telling my children that I'm crazy, but they also telling my children about their father for whom is absent. They never seen him before. Even they father tell them about their father. What kind of garbage is that? Their father do not even acknowledge that he is the father. He says that it is another father over him. What kind of garbage is that? Now, I ain't never confused my children like that. Ain't nothing but one father. That's me. And you depend on me for your very existence because I am the reason why you exist. So you are my responsibility. That's personal. There's no more personal responsibility than a father for his children. It gets no more personal than that. No more. So, but anyway. Okay, so now... The great vaults of opportunity in this nation. So we've come to cash this check, a check that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom and the security of justice in the civil and criminal courthouses in Seminole and Orange Counties in the state of Florida on August 12th in 2008 at 1040 in the morning. But I was the only one there. Civil rights movement went down to one person. How did that happen? See, that has to be bad leadership. 
See why I can't call none of all these civil rights organizations, nobody coming to defend the truth. So what are they defending? None coming to defend the Constitution that Dr. Martin Luther King was talking about. But I'm in there defending the Constitution that Dr. Martin Luther King was talking about, and he wasn't even no veteran. So that lets you know that this was a religious mandate that I fulfilled as well as a military one. Because a religious man was talking to this country about its constitutional obligations to people who look like me before I was born now. So how am I racist for fulfilling what this great man said that wasn't being fulfilled? How am I wrong for coming in, giving these children what a man said I was supposed to have, then I came, made it so, and then the government took it and then denied me the right to defend my honor and the honor of my wife. Now, how then do America have honor? Where is it? It, ha it wasn't in 63. It wasn't in 64. And it, and it wasn't in 2008. And it ain't today. They starving one man. And they know they starving him. So how is America ever going to be what she's supposed to be when her citizens ain't shit? You can't be no more than your people. If your people ain't shit, then you ain't shit as a country. Because it ain't the fact that I'm not deserving of freedom. It's the fact that the black motherfuckers and the white motherfuckers don't accept that we should be free. See, they both hating each other. So then who can be free from hate when both sides hateful? See, what child can be free from the parents' hate? See, because both of them make a valid point because both of them hating. See, well, where is one love, one hate? See, that's what Dr. Martin Luther King showed us. See, he showed love. See, Dr. M Minister Malcolm X spoke hate. See, so then it was easy, see, to, to say that that wasn't love. But those of us who know, know that he was speaking love to hate. It just sound like hate because it's spoken to hate in the image of love. See, and that's why I sound hateful. But I'm saying, nah, brother, just because I love myself don't mean I hate you. See, because I trying to do what's best for me, man, doesn't mean I don't want what's best for you. But if I have to do what's best for me, why does it make you mad? And that's what I want to ask my family. See, I'm not talking about the greater world because, hey, man, you can't change the world until you change your circumstances. So if I'm caught around my family and then would not be enslaved to their ignorance. See, so my family say give it to God, right? Now, when they say give it to God, that means they gave it to God. See what I'm saying? They saying, I don't know what else to do but give it to God, and you should give it to God too. But I'm saying, but how about if I'm God and it was given to me? Oh, you do oh, see, and you're like, oh man. I'm just asking the question. If you telling me to give it to God, and I'm telling you that the law says that we could do this, now you don't want to hear what the law say. You want to tell me, man, just give it to God. But I'm saying, well, if God gave me this great mind to discern what the law say and then have enough confidence in my discernment of the law to go in before judges and stand on what I believe, why would a Christian tell me to give what they see me doing to God? I'm saying, so why don't you help me give our children the blessing? Because you gave it to God. That's all I'm telling y'all young kids. See, they give your blessing to God. Because they don't know how to help you bless. Like they didn't know how to help Jesus bless us. So what they did is they killed Jesus. For, so they can continue to have their place and nation. If you read John 11, it'll tell you. 
it, it that that the high priest Caiaphas said, do you know that it be expedient that one man shall die so that Rome don't come take our place and nation? Where is God? You know who was in Rome? Caesar. So Caesar was God. That's who they was afraid of. Just like these people afraid of the government. See, they afraid of everything but God because they know that the God that they speak of is gone. He's up at in the right hand of the Father. And they say the only way you will see that God is through them. But that ain't what the Bible say. The Bible says the only way you will see the Father is through the Son. Now, that means that the Son has to be doing the work of the Father. If not, the Father and the Son cannot be one. How can I be a, a, a one with my Father and I don't do what my Father do? See, that's why my Father can't see I am. he and I are one. Because the game that I played, I played when the game was played on me. See, so he couldn't see it because he is the one that catch the mark. See, but I'm saying, yeah, dad, but look, you think they got me as if I'm the mark, but I'm saying, no, I caught them because they was off the mark. See what I'm saying? But he couldn't understand it because he, <laughs> I guess the storm was raging and he couldn't hear the calmness within the storm. See, and I was trying to tell him I'm a perfect storm in an imperfected storm. See, so I'm showing you how I perfected the storm, but you couldn't understand it. But like I say, but one day people will see. We have also come to this hollow spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of now. This is no time to engage in the luxury of cooling off or to take the tranquilling uh, quilling drug of uh, graduate, uh, gradualism. Now, now is the time to make real the promise of democracy. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. Now is the time to lift our nation from the quicksand of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. Now is the time to make justice a reality for all our, of God's children. It would be fatal for the nation to overlook the urgency of the moment. This sweltering summer of the Negro's legitimate descent, uh, discon, uh, discontent will not pass until there is an invigorating autumn of freedom, equal, equal, uh, equality, in 1963 is not an end, but a beginning. Those who hope that the Negro needed to blow off steam and will now be content will have a rude awakening if the nation returns to business as usual. There will be neither rest nor tranquility in America until the Negro is granted his citizenship rights. The whirlwinds of revolt will continue to shake the foundation of our nation until the bright days of justice emerge. And that, is, and that is something that I must say to my people who stand on the sworn, who stand on the worn threshold which leads into the palace of, of justice in the civil and criminal courthouses and Seminole and Orange counties in the state of Florida, as well as in the federal courthouse in the middle district of Florida, and now in the Osceola County Courthouse in Kissimmee, Florida. See, they got me in, in, in three different counties, but I got them in four counties. I got them in Escambia County. I got them in, uh, in Orange County. I have them in Seminole County, and now I have them in Osceola County. I have the devil trapped in the courthouse in four different counties in the state of Florida. Courthouses, just like they had John Wilkes Booth cornered in a, in, a, in a warehouse after he killed um, uh, the 16th president of these United States of America, 
President Abraham Lincoln. See, I have the United States Postal Service and the IRS uh, for, for um, their treatment of its citizens surrounded inside of the civil and criminal courthouses in Seminole and Orange Counties in the state of Florida, in the federal courthouse in the Middle District of Florida, as well as in the Osceola Courthouse in Kissimmee, Florida, with the Florida Constitution, the United States Constitution, the Florida Bill of Rights, the United States Bill of Rights, the United States Declaration of Independence, statutory law, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, history, the Ten Commandments, the Holy Bible, and the Holy Quran, all got them trapped, waiting on the people. <laughs> See, the devil is shaking in his mo He's shaking in his boots. See, I can't curse that, whoever that person is. Well, but in the process of gaining our rightful place, we, we must not be guilty of wrong wrongful deeds. See? See, so that's what I'm telling y'all. See, to get my rightful place, I couldn't be wrong. But then that's when my family member, you think you all it, you think you right. You always think you all. And I'm saying, bro, I'm fighting for my goddamn life. And you sitting there talking, you think, you think, you think. I got to be. You can't help me. You spitting in my face. You telling me I think I'm all of this. But I'm inside of the civil and criminal courthouses in Seminole and Orange Counties in the state of Florida fighting for my life. And they spitting in my face. Family members. Christians. See, what kind of family this is? But what kind of person is a Christian anyway? That's what I could never understand as a kid. I'm looking at them saying, them ain't good people. See, they ain't good. They, they, I don't want to be like that. See, that's what I was telling my wife and my daughter. See, I would become a better father for you. I would become a better husband for you. But I'm never going to let you change the person I am. Never. Because the person I am is going to allow me to be a better husband to you. It's going to allow me to be a better father to you. But if you change the person I am, then I have to then work on myself and I'm going to have to be selfish. So when, see, and that's what's happening now. That's what I was telling my family. See, I'm here to support you. Now, when I have to defend myself, I'm going to be selfish because I have to then devote all my time to saving myself. <laughs> see what I'm saying? See, before I devoted all my time in supporting you. But when are you going to support me? That's what I'm saying. See, all of this support and I'm not supported. The only thing supporting me is the Florida Constitution, the United States Constitution, the Florida Bill of Rights, the United States Bill of Rights, the United States Declaration of Independence, statutory law, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, history, the Ten Commandments, the Holy Bible, and the Holy Quran. But everybody who say they believe in all these things trying to kill me because now it's about your prestige. See, it's not about the people. It's about how the people see you. But you're not worth seeing because the real you, nobody know, not even you. See, that's what I was trying to tell my wife. See, I know who I am. I know, right? But I'm trying to be a better husband. See, that's what I became. That's not who I am. I became your husband, so I'm trying to be the best husband for you I can, but I got to be the person I am. See, if I can't if I can't be me, then I can't be the husband you want me to be because I'm fake. I'm not me. So I can't love you if I can't see myself loving you. See what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to get people to understand. See, I love you because I... Because I am who I am. See, I worked on me. And then now I can love others. Because I'm a finished product. See what I'm saying? But I don't know. I know what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, my love for my wife is allowing me to kill the hate for me. See what I'm saying? Because I love her so much, I can reveal the hate. See, now, if I if I didn't love her, then I would fight hate with hate. See what I'm saying? That's why I was telling this young man, and I, and I said this before, about if you come up to a, a fire 
and these two fire trucks there, and they both got fire coming out of the hoses. Who burning the house down? See, that's what Dr. Martin Luther King talking about. He's saying, see, let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. So this is what I'm telling y'all. Before I could love y'all, I had to defend the love that I had for my wife, my daughter, my son, my grandmother, my cousins, everybody, right? So I had to show love by showing restraint. See, in the military, they call that maintaining your military bearing. See, so when I went into the military, I became um, more resolute in the person I am. See, before I went into the service, people was telling me I wasn't who I am. Plus, they was telling me what not to do to become who I am. See what I'm saying? I was telling them, I'm going to do this. Oh, you can't do that. Man, I'm going to do it. Oh, you can't do that. And so I was like, damn, man, they don't never tell you how to do something. They just tell you you can't do it. So that's why I went to the military so I learned, so I could learn how to do what I needed to do. See, I needed to learn how to get um, the thing that burned in me, out of me. You know, so say if you have a burning desire to help people, then that and that that desire is burning. See what I'm saying? So the only way you can can quench that desire is you got to do it. See? And now once you do it, it's over. It's 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 out of you now. It's not it's not burning your insides. I done delivered it inside of the silver and criminal courthouses in Seminole and Orange Counties in the state of Florida as well as in the federal courthouse in the middle district of Florida, and then now in the Osceola County um, courthouse, as well as the Escambia County courthouse. See, so I have documentation in four courthouses in four different counties. So why should I be afraid to speak when I have already spoken? And why would I be afraid to cite what has already been cited if I am a statement that has already been made. See, I am history in the making. So therefore, the history that I'm making has already been made. It just hasn't been adjudicated properly. See, see what I'm saying? See, I am the adjudication of the history that is now sentencing the, um, the kings and queens of America. See, that's why I'm using the Declaration of Independence because the kings and queens of America has now multiplied. See what I'm saying? See, they don't say they're king. They act like kings. See, so it's not what you say, it's what you do. <laughs> See what I'm saying? See, that's why I tell people, well, when I was around kings, I revealed to the king that I was around that I'm a king so that they would respect that it's a king in their presence, right? So now, when I looked like I was a peasant, then when I revealed I was a king in the place where kings, kingdoms rise on the battlefield, right? Now, but the battlefield that I had to rise in is the one that Dr. Martin Luther King created when he said, that let, let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. See, so I'm saying I understand that because it's no way I could sit here talking to you if I was bitter. See, I'm hurt. So that's different. See, that's like you can, you can win a fight and still be hurt because the person could hurt you, right? Black your eye, bust your lip, break your jaw. But you can still win the fight. But you still hurt. And that's what I'm saying. I'm I, I'm battered and bruised. Don't don't please. Don't because you can't see a mental bruise. You can't see a mental wound. But they are all over me, right? But my mind has been a was able to take the blows. And I was able to heal uh, the wound, but not the pain. You see what I'm saying? By me um, 
educating the wound, which is my mind, I was able to heal my mind, but now what's left is the pain of rejection. See what I'm saying? Because I'm rejected and I'm starving. So my body is now um, fighting me. See, when I was younger, I, I guess I had enough um, uh, metabolism to, to keep going on. But as I get older, my metabolism slowing down and I need to eat more. But see, do you give a damn when your objection is to starve me to death? So that's all I'm telling the next generation that this ain't like Jesus. I did not starve intentionally for you. I am being starved because I love you. See what I'm saying? So now I, I'm not starving intentionally. I'm being intentionally starved. See, so the people who are around me are, are, are um, guilty of starving me. Now they eating. But they feel like I don't need to eat. They feeding their preachers. They're feeding their ministers. But they're not feeding their children. See, so these people are in love with lust. They are not in love with the creations they created in lust. Because there's never been love in them. It's always been lust. So I'm giving you love personified in the example of love given. See, because when you love someone, you don't have to know them. See, Dr. Martin Luther King didn't know us. Minister Malcolm X didn't know us, but they knew of us because they knew that we was going to come. See, so they wasn't fighting for those people who was with them that wouldn't fight alongside them. They were fighting for us. So when we got here, we would have some, some remnants of love.